Hi, this is Travis Shaw from the Mosby Heritage Area Association. I'm standing here with MHA President Jennifer Moore. And today we are exploring the history of the Ashby's Gap Turnpike, this historic road that runs straight through the middle of our heritage area. Um, this road has been in use for centuries. In fact, it's been in use long before it was ever called the Ashby's Gap Turnpike. Um, where we're standing now is at the crest of Ashby's Gap. It's a wind gap in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And this was always a convenient place to travel across the Blue Ridge to and from the Shenandoah Valley. Um, we know that this road was in use for centuries by local Native American groups who would travel back and forth, um, trade resources back and forth between the Shenandoah Valley, the Blue Ridge area, on down to the coastal plains uh, well to our east. Now, the Indian trails were here when settlers first started arriving in the 18th century, and I think that's where Jennifer is going to pick up our story. It does show up here as Ashby's Bent in the 1736 survey of Lord Fairfax's land. After that, it was uh, referred to as the Bellhaven Road, which of course references the original name for Alexandria, which was Bellhaven. And then from there, it was more commonly referred to as the main mail route from Alexandria to Winchester. Yeah, so the area gets the name Ashby's Gap, um, or the Ashby's Gap Turnpike, from one of the first land grants that was given here in this area, and that was a grant uh, from part of that Fairfax grant to Thomas Ashby. And Ashby established a tavern um, just down the way a little bit in what is now the village of Paris. Now, this area is gonna see a lot of settlers coming through during the colonial era, a lot of commerce. Uh, during the Revolutionary War, probably one of the more interesting uses of this uh, road was actually to move prisoners. In October of 1781, uh, Cornwallis's army surrenders at Yorktown, and now all of a sudden the Continental Army is busy trying to figure out where exactly to house these guys. Where's a safe place away from, you know, British incursions? Um, that they can keep them. And many of the prisoners, about 2,000, 2,500 men, are going to be marched west to uh, Winchester. And they're going to come up through Ashby's Gap. We know they camp down at the bottom of the, the foothills here, so just behind us on uh, November 4th, 1781. That morning they will march up here through the gap and then wade across the freezing Shenandoah River the next day on their way out to prisoner of war camps. One of the more interesting stories that comes out of this march happens right here at Ashby's Tavern. Uh, one of the officers who's with the British forces, a Scotsman uh, named Samuel Graham, he and several other British officers stop at the Ashby's Tavern. And when they enter, Mrs. Ashby cannot recognize what army they're with. She at first thinks they might be militiamen. They say, no, no, no. Then maybe are you with the Continental Army? No, we're not. And then she pieces it together. She says, you must be those serpents who came here with Cornwallis. I have a son who beat you at Saratoga and another son who was at Yorktown. Then she calms her fears by saying, sorry, truck going by. She calms her fears by saying, you know, my mother was from the old country, so I will treat you with kindness. So they sit down and have a nice meal there at the Ashby's uh, Tavern. Um, just one of the many stories that takes place on this historic piece of ground. Uh, Jen, it's going to pick up a little bit after the war. So in the uh, New Nation era, again, it was the main mail route from Alexandria to Winchester, which came by a mail stagecoach every day but Sunday. So people could pay a little money to join the mail stagecoach out from Alexandria and hop off at any place that dropped the mail, most likely taverns or stores in crossroads such as Chin's Crossing, which is now Middleburg. By uh, January 30th, 1810, an act of General Assembly created the Ashby's Gap Turnpike. So it was a paved road um, from the Little River Turnpike, which ends Alexandria to Aldi. Ashby's Gap Turnpike Company picking up from Aldi out to the Shenandoah River where the Millwood Turnpike Company would pick up to Winchester. It was 21 miles. Uh, it included five tolls and an additional toll at the Goose Creek Bridge. By 1824, the president of the Ashby's Gap Turnpike Company was Burr Powell, who was the postmaster of Middleburg, and he reported that it was the best turnpike in the Commonwealth of Virginia. He also reported it cost $6,500 per mile to build. So because of that, they obviously really relied on subscribers to the Turnpike Company. They relied on lotteries for road maintenance and money from the Board of Public Works and toll income. So 
the board of trustees of the Ashby's Gap Turnpike Company were the most prestigious men who lived along the turnpike and had the largest vested interest in a successful turnpike road, including um, the founders of Middleburg, Levin Powell and his sons, Burr Powell of The Hill in Middleburg, and Cuthbert Powell, who lived and died at Langolan. It also included Nathaniel Burl, who owned the Burl Morgan Mill in Millwood. And uh, at that time, the Millwood Turnpike went straight through Millwood, not what we know 50 does today. So obviously they needed their um, produce, livestock, etc., to be uh, marketed up and down the Ashby's Gap Turnpike, so they had a huge vested interest in it. Um, by 1834, we do see a um, enslaved coffle come through from Alexandria, from Franklin and Armfield slave traders, all the way to Winchester and then on to New Orleans. Thank you so much. We are going to end this little video here, but I want you guys to uh, stay tuned and join us a little bit later on as we explore more of the 19th and 20th century history of the Turnpike. Thank you for joining us.